We mentioned those headlines out of GM a few moments ago. They are extending some downtime, Jim, at uh, three plants, uh, in part because of this chip shortage. They're going to reassess in March. They say it's hurting everyone in the industry. They say in some cases uh, where there is a shortage, they will build vehicles without certain modules. So uh, some features will obviously be sacrificed. And Jim, we'll hope to learn more when they post earnings tomorrow. Yeah, Argus upgraded Ford, but Ford had a similar problem, talking about $1 billion to $2 billion. It's an 18-month problem. The Chinese are hoarding uh, these. Uh, there's only a couple companies with the foundry capacity. We decided to outsource our foundries to, uh, to uh, countries, by the way, who have very close relationships with China. Uh, President Trump, I, he did not really understand the significance. I uh, thought of it a military problem. It's really a problem about American industry. And, David, you can't just throw up foundries. They take a huge amount of time. If you think that the shortage is real, Applied Materials is going to report. Land Research is going to report. KLA to, uh, is important. It's all about the food chain and our decision to de-emphasize it in this country. So there is currently an industry-wide shortage of semiconductors, also known as chips, that is causing havoc for many players trying to take part in the electric vehicle revolution. A semiconductor is just a material typically made of silicon, which conducts electricity more than an insulator like glass, but less than a pure conductor like copper or aluminum, hence the name semiconductor. More importantly, these are used in almost every electronic piece of technology we use today. Phones, computers, appliances, gaming consoles, medical equipment, and now more than ever, more tech-enabled electric vehicles. The supply chain of this industry has become incredibly complex in recent years with a surge in demand, and this is without a doubt a space to watch closely. Trade tensions between the United States and China have raised national security concerns that we'll learn more about shortly. But to be clear, the importance of this space does have severe concerns far beyond just EVs. Having essential design and production of cutting-edge semiconductors is essential for the U.S. Department of Defense and military and aerospace companies as well. If you dominate chips, you can dominate the defense, tech, and intelligence industries. For a long time, the U.S. was a leader in new chip products, but from a manufacturing standpoint, the U.S. has lost ground as Intel has started to lag Asian rivals like TSMC and Samsung. In this industry, a semiconductor fabrication plant called a fab, or sometimes called a foundry, is the factory where these devices are manufactured. If a foundry does not also produce its own designs, as is more and more common today, it is known as a pure play semiconductor foundry. Just a few months ago, the Wall Street Journal reported that TSMC was going to build a fab in Arizona, the company now regarded as the world leader in the space with the most advanced manufacturing processes on the planet. They supply chips to the big names like Apple, Qualcomm, Nvidia, and Intel. The cost for one of these fabs, $12 billion. This is exactly the reason most United States semiconductor companies are fabless. Most don't have the stones to make that type of investment to make these incredibly difficult manufacturing techniques work. A 10 to $20 billion investment without a guarantee of return on investment is a huge ask. And just real quick, here's a look at some of the machines needed in this process. EUV is extreme ultraviolet light that makes silicon features down to a few nanometers in size. These machines are the size of a train, each with over 100,000 components, weighing 180 tons, consuming more than one megawatt of electrical power, cost $120 million, and is usually sold out for years. Some of the biggest names in the foundry space are TSMC, a pure play foundry leading the way in the 5 nanometer technology, more on that shortly. Samsung, often competing with TSMC for the top spot globally and is now also working on 5 nanometer technology. Global Foundries is an American company from a spin-off from Advanced Micro Devices or AMD, making chips for Qualcomm and AMD with three fab plants in the US and a few overseas. And then Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, or SMIC, a Chinese foundry supplying chips to Broadcom, Qualcomm, and Texas Instruments, among others. The U.S. share of worldwide installed fab capacity has declined from 37% in 1990 to 12% in 2020, according to the United States Semiconductor Industry Association and Boston Consulting Group. 
Over that same time period, Asia saw a meteoric rise in the development of new fabs and they now account for 80% of the world's capacity. So if you're sitting there wondering to yourself, what about Intel? It's a very important question. They have been directly in the crosshairs of controversy as many in the space believe Intel should be aiming for TSMC's newly acquired foundry crown. Despite Intel falling a few steps behind, many thought Intel should have went all in on the foundry model and challenged TSMC and Samsung. The truth is, this $430 billion semiconductor world is driven by the foundry business model, where all of the biggest tech companies in the world will continue to look for the components they need to keep winning. And now just recently, we got news from Reuters that Intel plans to tap TSMC to make their new chips using the 7 nanometer process, which was seen as a waving of the white flag of sorts by some and a sign that they have now lost their manufacturing edge in recent years. But Intel has outsourced chips for some time and the head of Intel's self-driving subsidiary Mobileye told Reuters its next autonomous vehicle processor will be made by TSMC on its 7 nanometer process. But back to the supply shortage and the electric vehicle space and how Tesla fits into all of this. Demand for these chips has soared during the pandemic as people bought tech, making stay at home more enjoyable and productive. This has left the auto industry to be hammered as most manufacturers use just-in-time production methodology and they have very complicated supply chains. These chips are used in everything from power steering and brake sensors to entertainment systems and parking cameras. The smarter these cars get, the more chips they use. GM just announced it is shutting three plants and slowing production at a fourth due to this shortage, saying it could miss 2021 targets as a result. A Honda plant in the UK was shut down a few days last month due to this chip shortage, and Ford and Volkswagen have also shut plants or cut production while they wait for supplies to pick up. Volkswagen said in December it will make 100,000 fewer cars that quarter as a result of the shortage. Making a semiconductor is one of the most complex manufacturing processes out there, with lead times of up to 26 weeks being the norm in the industry. When these chip makers decide if they should sell to the auto industry or the telecom and server industry, it's an easy choice to go with the server industry because their gross margins are just better, leaving the auto industry in a very tight spot. And there's definitely not enough competition in the semiconductor manufacturing market as TSMC and Samsung are the only found in the world with a working 5 nanometer process. Congress enacted legislation earlier this year calling for federal incentives for domestic chip manufacturing and investments in semiconductor research to meet this growing demand. And there is a lot of finger pointing in the industry with chip makers saying auto companies' preference to keep inventory low hurt their planning while the automakers say chip makers are prioritizing consumer electronics because those devices do provide the bulk of their sales and profits. But here we go. Car makers with more software and chip expertise, this should sound familiar, are set to face a much smoother ride while those whose traditional strengths are bending metal are going to be more prone to supply chain issues. And one quick important point, most automakers don't deal directly with TSMC or Samsung. There are basically middlemen like Robert Bosch and Continental, which in turn deal with auto chip designers like NXP Semiconductors and Infineon Technologies. These European chip makers make some parts in-house but still outsource most of their production to TSMC. It is a big challenge for these automotive chip designers to get their orders prioritized by foundries because their volume is dwarfed by their consumer electronic peers and remember this point. We learned at Autonomy Day that Samsung would make Tesla's in-house design chip, Hardware 3.0, in Austin, Texas, and Elon did not expect any problems with supply. At the same time, he also mentioned Tesla was already working on the next generation of the chip that would be three times better than the current chip at the time. Hardware 3.0 runs on Samsung's 14 nanometer process, and a big misconception by a lot of people is that because Tesla designed their own chip in-house, that this also means they are manufacturing it as well. This is not the case as we should all understand clearly by now. And it's not just a matter of, oh, Tesla should just start manufacturing their own chips. Negative. 
For all of the massive costs and risks associated, Tesla would barely have enough cash for one full foundry. But then over the summer last year, we got news that Tesla was working on hardware 4.0 with TSMC that was going to hit mass production in Q4 of this year. Rather than diving into the details, just know this chip space is all about faster, smaller, and more efficient. This chip with TSMC was rumored to be moving to a 7 nanometer process from the previous 14 with Samsung. Now, chips are made using billions of tiny transistors, which are electrical gates that switch on and off to perform calculations. They take power to do this, and the smaller the transistor, the less power is required. 7 nanometers and 14 nanometers are just measurements of the size of these transistors. Smaller transistors are more power efficient and they can do more calculations without getting too hot, which is a common issue. Smaller transistors can also reduce costs and increase density at the same sizes, and this means more cores per chip. 7 nanometers is effectively twice as dense as the previous 14, but it's important to note that this does not mean a 7 nanometer process will be twice as fast. Performance doesn't scale exactly with the transistor size, and at such small scales, these numbers are not as precise anymore. But back to Tesla. In another turn of events, we got news Tesla was partnering with Samsung again on a new 5 nanometer chip for full self-driving, according to a report out of Korea. The report said the Samsung Electronics Foundry division is currently conducting research and development on 5 nanometer class system semiconductors to be mounted on Tesla autonomous vehicles. The 5 nanometer semiconductor applied with the Extreme Ultraviolet or EUV process is a high-tech product that only a small number of companies such as Samsung Electronics and TSMC can produce worldwide. And then just over two weeks ago, we got news Samsung might be building a 10 to $17 billion foundry in Austin, Texas, expanding their current operations. The new plant wouldn't be ready to begin operations at scale until 2024. And the foundry can only operate with those giant machines from ASML, which they have their own production production bottlenecks that limit companies like TSMC and Samsung from actually expanding. And some of ASML's biggest issues are from restrictions that the Trump administration put on high-end semiconductor shipments to certain Chinese companies. So yes, Tesla is still actually reliant on Samsung or TSMC to ultimately make their custom in-house designed chips, both hardware 3.0 and hardware 4. But Tesla has an economies of scale benefit that no other automaker, especially in the United States, is even coming close to. Until another automaker can prove they have any level of real EV demand to drive TSMC and Samsung to make them a priority, Tesla will continue to enjoy not only the benefits of their custom chips, but the benefit of production supply driven by the exceedingly high demand for Tesla and their production growth that's expected to grow by 50% a year for the foreseeable future. The pandemic caused most of the legacy automakers to slow production and they also chose to slow their supply chains. But when they tried to ramp back up supply of these chips, the chip makers were busy sending supplies elsewhere. Tesla, on the other hand, never had any meaningful downturn in production outside of the forced factory shutdowns as the demand for Tesla vehicles continued to soar even through the pandemic. And if Samsung can succeed in mass producing a 5 nanometer Tesla chip, it could win the attention of other automakers and gain an edge over rival TSMC, which happened to unveil the world's first 7 nanometer vehicle specific design platform last year. Given the epic battle for this new market, Samsung has reorganized its organizational structure by reallocating some manpower to the autonomous and vehicle technology space, where Tesla as a customer is the only sure bet, at least for now. So, no, Tesla is not bulletproof per se when it comes comes to the semiconductor supply shortages, but they are absolutely in the strongest position by far of any automaker, and this position of strength should not be changing anytime soon in my opinion. But that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you learned something new. Please like this video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content, and I hope to see you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.